Hey guys, thanks for listening. If you'd like to support us, go to patreon.com slash bestboys. Twenty seventeen has been one of the best years for film, but what will come in twenty eighteen? Welcome to the Best Boys Podcast. I'm Danny. And I'm Vince. This episode is going to be a little different. We're gonna talk about our personal top tens from twenty seventeen. What we thought was best, not is actually best. And then what we're looking forward to in twenty eighteen, followed by if there's time talking about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Before then, did you see anything besides Star Wars The Last Jedi since we were last recording? I've been watching Lucifer on Hulu. I've gone, I finished Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on Netflix, the one with the Ghost Rider. Hmm. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I'm almost done with the first season of Winona Earp on Netflix. All pretty good. I've probably watched... Like, I've watched a ton of movies, I think, since last recording. Actually, no. I think that was before. But I've seen Star Wars. Uh, I watched The Accountant. I think I've seen a couple others, but I can't remember them right now. So, what have you watched? I saw Star Wars, obviously. Like, like everybody did. I also saw The Shape of Water finally came out over here, so I could see that. How was that? That was very good. I watched The Big Sick, finally. I watched The Last City of Zed. Couldn't get through Good Time because either I didn't want to watch a movie or that movie's bad. One of the two. I'm not going to say the movie's bad because I didn't finish it. I also didn't want to watch another movie after I tried to watch it. So, But other than that, I can't really think of... Did I say Lady Bird last time we did we'll see it? I don't I, think so. Maybe Lady Bird then, unless I saw that before we recorded last time. I don't remember. I don't think so, though. I think that only came out recently. Anyways, let's get to our top 10 lists. We're going to start with 10, obviously. Go down. Then I then I did this right, <laughs> All right. about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> cool. All right, what's your number 10? Star Wars. Really? Yeah. yeah. I did not think it was as good as it could have been or should have been. Star Wars is not on my top 10 list at all. No. No, because I agree with you. It could have been better, but I don't think it was like... I don't think it was as bad as people are saying it is, as in people want it removed from Star Wars canon in gen- like completely. And to be frank, the movie really doesn't matter at all, besides spoiler things in it. My number 10 was The Disaster Artist, which I should have said. I saw The Disaster Artist, I just looking at my, I should have just read my list, I'm like, oh yeah, I saw this, I watched this and this and this. But yeah, my number 10 is The Disaster Artist, the movie about the making of the room. Could have been more realistic because they very clearly had to get Tommy Wiseau to sign off on it. So they had to change things to make him look like he wasn't a complete crazy asshole during the making of the movie. Besides one scene. Number nine, I have War for the Planet of the Apes. For my number nine, I have John Wick 2. I haven't seen that yet. I just watched that this morning. (laughs) Gotcha. (laughs) War for the Planet of the Apes is probably the best in the trilogy of the Rise of the Planet of the Apes ones had like reasons for things to happen because this is the last one before the original takes place Mm -hmm. but it kind of felt like they threw some stuff in there just to be like this see caesar's son is cornelius Mm -hmm. and they find this girl who can't talk and they call her nova and nova is the girl who can't talk who charleston heston falls in love with maybe in the original one i also haven't seen the original john wick john wick 2 was good i don't think i didn't really like it as much as i liked the first one but it was, i mean it was good it, it kind of finished up what was going on in, in the first one at the very beginning of the second one and then it just kind of then it turned into its new story gotcha what was your eight uh blade runner 2049 mine was logan blade runner 2049 Looked really good. Was very good. People wanted... Because the original Blade Runner has a director's cut, and then it has the extended cut, and the extended cut is like the widely praised one. That's two hours, I think. 
and the extended cut's like three hours, and people wanted the extended director's cut of 2049, because 2049 is three hours by itself, and mm-hmm. they wanted the four-hour cut, and Jeez. the director's like, there is no four-hour cut. This is the only cut that you're getting. Really? Unless Ridley Scott's like, I want to make a cut, which he didn't have anything to do with the movie. He got kicked off set, director of the original movie. Thoughts on Logan? I mean, that was a good movie. <laughs> it was a good it was a good wrap-up. I mean, we've talked about it before mm-hmm. a lot, so, I mean... It is what it is at this point. I mean, that one came out, what, really early this year? Like yeah, that was February or something? Mm-hmm. That's the last we'll see of Hugh Jackman in any X-Men stuff. It's so. a sad, sad, sad thing. It's a sad thing. Number seven? Beauty and the Beast. Haven't seen that yet. Don't know if I have that, but... It's on Netflix. For now. For now. My number seven is Get Out. That was the horror one, it's, right? Yeah, the directed by Jordan Peele from Key and Peele, the horror quote-unquote horror it's more of a thriller right i don't know if i would consider it horror myself but that's a another talk for another day (laughs) when the oscars roll around we initially do those predictions how was beauty and the beast beauty and beast was good it was really i mean it was very similar to the original cartoon with some extra stuff added in because it is live action they changed a few things but i mean for the most part it's very similar and it was nice to have that like one of those childhood movies put into a live action like that and emma watson and it was very good mm. so I, I liked it a lot from what i've heard i think she said no to la la land to be in it mm. which i saw like the beginning of la la land the other day and i it was kind of hard to watch at for like to start watching so i didn't i didn't finish it because mm. i was just watching it while we were eating dinner and i don't know it was just not really it's, my thing. It's and I like musicals. It's supposed and stuff. to be like a '60s musical kind of a thing. Yeah, with iPhones, but <laughs> but well, set in modern yeah. day. But that's what the director wanted to do. Is that? No, I get, I get that. I mean, I, I, I like musicals usually. Like, I'm pretty okay with it. Like, I want to see The Greatest Showman still. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's been getting some bad reviews. Has it? Yeah, that sucks. But, I mean, just the first few, like, I think I might have watched the first 20, 30 minutes of it, and it was just mm. not not my thing. It gets better. Number six. <laughs> uh, mine is Wonder Woman. Mine was Justice League. You put Justice League higher than Logan? <laughs> okay, I did this, like, ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna do a joke of putting Justice League as my number one, <laughs> but uh, I'm not gonna do. I didn't do that. Wonder Woman, obviously, a groundbreaking superhero movie. Logan was a groundbreaking superhero movie, like the first serious dark. There's consequences in it. Mm-hmm. Stuff that actually matters happens in it. Uh, Wonder Woman, along the same lines, stuff that actually matters for the character. First female superhero solo movie. First female directed superhero movie, top grossing, whatever. Tell me why you put Justice League <laughs> at number six. I, mean, I should have put that up higher. I wasn't thinking, mean, but uh, I mean, I liked Justice League. I mean, it, of course, I mean it was not the best movie I've ever seen, but it was entertaining to watch, and I that's what I like in a movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that they will do better with the future. And maybe not rush themselves so much. Uh, well, apparently, Justice League made executives at Warner Brothers and investors angry as to why they would keep Zack Snyder on after how badly Batman vs Superman was taken, and then they've completely replaced a bunch of the people that are working on the movies, like the concept people. Might be getting rid of Zack Snyder. They might not even keep doing DC. Movie. Um, like they might just revamp completely do an overhaul on everybody oh, or no, on, way. no way I, I think wonder woman would obviously stay yeah because she's the only and Gal she's Gadot's, like the only one who wasn't a Zack snyder the only director. one that did well yeah so far out of all of them yeah I, they shouldn't revamp it though like that like does, keep, because keep the actor ben affleck doesn't want to do it anymore oh he doesn't i thought he did after because he didn't want to do justice league uh-huh. during filming you can tell like he's we're not i don't want to get on this whole tangent but he like very clearly they kept coming up to him with changes and changes and changes that's why his acting was like i don't want to be here anymore gotcha but gotcha. they they are apparently looking at replacements for him for the batman standalone and uh, this it's just gonna get so messy that's what happens when you have two different directors work on a movie and get two 
overhaul. I mean, the reason they had it is a legitimate reason. And I hope for the best from DC because I love superhero movies. They can be fun, make them dark. They can do whatever. Just try harder to make them good, not just to make money. Anyways, number five. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I have Baby Driver. I have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yet. That's in my pile of movies from 2017 to watch. Mm -hmm. But also in that pile is the first Guardians because I haven't seen that either. (laughs) But I haven't seen that as mattering for any of the Avengers movies. So until now. so Yeah. Um, the first one is definitely better than the second one, in my opinion. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> so the second one... I mean, the second one is good. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. It's good. But I don't know. I just... I did not enjoy watching that one as much as I did watching the first one. Okay. That makes sense. Did they do a lot of the same stuff? Like, you remember this from the first one kind of thing? Or was it just... Not if- really, no. I mean, it was new. It was funny. Like, they had they had some comedy in mm-hmm. it. Like, but... I don't know, it was just, I think it might have just been what they were doing in this movie that just, I didn't find it as entertaining. I don't I don't know exactly what it was, but there's just something about it that I did not really enjoy as much as the first one. But I'm kind of like that with a lot of sequels. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not a big fan of, like, twos in, like, yeah. the, in movies, sequels, just, so I think it just might have been, maybe it was that, I don't know. I see what you mean with sequels being... I mean, there are some sequels that are better than the originals. A yeah, lot no. of sequels are, for the big franchises at least, are very yeah. That and I mean, hit or miss. I there are sequels that I've liked before, but I mean, just just a lot of the times, more times than not, I don't usually care for the sequel. And Except this for those was sh- those shitty Harry Potter sequels. Am I right? <laughs> I didn't like the second Harry Potter, but I liked all of the other ones after that. That's a different Baby Driver. I was going to say that was my favorite movie of the year until I saw it. Like, when I saw it, that was my favorite movie. And then I was like, over time, I saw more movies. I was like, this is so good. This is so good. Baby Driver is an original idea with the soundtrack being mixed in with the action scenes merged together and the cinematography and everything. And then there's um, that the uh, blacked out spot in the movie. Four, I have Logan. For four, I have Baby Driver. <laughs> hey, you know. We got one that was kind of close. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Driver's there. Like I said earlier with Logan, it was groundbreaking for hopefully something we'll see more of unless the whole Disney buying Fox messes everything up. For me, Baby Driver, it was good. I mean, it, I mean, oh, it, was, it was it was a great movie. Yeah, it was great. It was just kind of just puts a little bit it's, of a it's cloud, the of, a dark cloud over it. It's the question of does somebody like Kevin Spacey in that, should that ruin it? Because this one person out of this whole ensemble cast, I'm not saying that it ruins it. He was great in the movie. What he did was terrible in real life. Yeah. But those are two different things. Yeah, I, I like that movie a lot. It was one of my favorites that I've seen this year. I, there's a lot more movies that I wish I would have went and like actually taken the time to go see this year, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, that was one of the ones that I really did enjoy. Number three, Thor. I have Lady Bird. I saw like one commercial for that, and I was not impressed. It was hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes for like two, three weeks until the guy that he gave it a B and said it was rotten because he wanted to make that review go down. He he was like, it doesn't deserve to be a hundred percent, so I'm gonna give it a rotten to make it ninety nine percent. But I see what he's saying. It's not the perfect movie. It's not. There's so many cliches of it's a coming of age story of a teenage girl in high school during the early 2000s. She goes to a religious school in California. She's trying to go to college out of state, but her mm-hmm. family doesn't have money for that. So that's the that's right. and then like emotional stuff. But that movie was so well done and one of the many movies on this full list that I teared up during. I actually like had tears during this during Lady Bird and after it when I was talking to my friend Mitch, he was like, yeah, I cried too. Because there are scenes in that movie that are just like, Jesus Christ. That's relatable right? to something that you could see in real life. So Thor, I mean, I thought Thor was great. Had the perfect amount of comedy, action, and like a good storyline too behind it to make it one of my favorite movies. And of course it was entertaining, which is what I look for in movies. It's that Taika Waititi. That was great. I mean, that probably made the movie. Perfect directing and apparently... Not Zack Schneider. <laughs> apparently, 
Kathleen Kennedy wants him to do a Star Wars movie, or she would love for him to do a Star Wars movie, which that would be amazing. He definitely should. <laughs> he, after he should just do everything. One. He should do every movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he should finish. He should do Werewolves and then do whatever. He should just make that sequel what, to what, what we. Oh, uh, Werewolves. It's this. It's gonna be the sequel to What We Do in the Shadows, which is his vampire documentary comedy movie. Okay. Which is hilarious. I think you told me about that before. Number two, I have The Shape of Water. I have Wonder Woman. Shape of Water. Obviously, Guillermo del Toro, one of my favorite directors, because his movies just looked beautiful. The creature in the movie was amazing. The suit. I want to know how many suits they had for that. Was that supposed to be like related to Hellboy at all? I thought no. you said something about that before. No, people. Oh no, people it was, wanted it to be. Or wasn't it supposed to be like one of those? Uh, was that universe? who made it no it's okay. fox searchlight okay it's a fairy tale romance homage to creature from the black lagoon kind of it's beauty and the beast meets little mermaid meets <laughs> creature from the black lagoon is what i thought while watching it there's obviously some awkward scenes slight spoilers for the beginning of the movie where there is a montage kind of a thing of her getting ready and she sets her timer and, and she masturbates in the bathtub you don't see it you just see her legs up and you hear like Splash. the water splashing and i was just like Okay, I see where we're going with this movie. But the acting was amazing, and the music was done by, I never know how to pronounce it, Alexandre Desplat, or Depla, who does all the music for Wes Anderson movies, and you can clearly tell it's that kind of, like, twinkly music. Wonder Woman was... Again, kind of like, kind of like Thor, except not not so much comedy. A little bit of comedy mm. because you put somebody who's been in this Amazonian ancient life into modern at the time modern day mm. society, and she's like, "Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this?" Like that's kind of funny. Like she just doesn't know like what basic things to us are, and then classic fish out of water. Yeah, scenario. Yeah, and then like. There's the action in it, which was great. An empowering movie, obviously. That's mm -hmm. one of the main things about the Wonder Woman movie. And it was, it was again, entertaining. And, I mean, I think they did a great job with it. It was fully explained. I hate when movies kind of seem like near the end that they rush to that finish point. But there really didn't seem like that at all in there for, for example, me. Justice League? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which, the point with Wonder Woman, that a villain does make a movie. Because even though the Wonder Woman villain was not good, in my opinion, how they explained it to where he was like, I just whispered in their ear, I didn't do anything, they did this all themselves, humans are terrible. Instead of having it be, oh no, this is all my doing. And then her believing in humans, but then being like, oh, maybe humans are actually bad. But yeah. she doesn't fully think that. That compared to, I want to destroy everything is a great shows you that having a good villain can make your movie number one on your list spider-man homecoming mine is the big sick which i watched yesterday <laughs> totally didn't cry through that whole movie what was I, that movie about it's how kumail nanjiani and his wife it's actually the story of how they met but it's a comedy slash drama i guess because they're it's the big sick and his wife gets sick so it's they he does stand up like he does in real life and they meet after it and hang out and then they start dating and then she finds out his family is he's he's Muslim so they have arranged marriage and his family wants him to marry a Muslim girl right so that's how that goes and then all this stuff changes and mm -hmm. boom 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 that movie was amazing and I would recommend it but go ahead with um, Spider Man Spider Man I mean I'll, I'll obviously a lot of my movies are comic hero superhero movies i love superhero movies and spider-man was always one of my favorite superheroes i actually did enjoy the toby Maguire spider-mans because mm -hmm. when i first saw those i was really young so I, I i liked them it was another good marvel movie like thor was comedy because i mean peter parker is just how he is as a character or a person is funny witty and it was just a great movie to watch i mean it didn't rush anything again like how wonder woman was it didn't it was it was good i liked it your list was how entertained you were yeah for, for the most part. mine was did this movie move me emotionally because i want to see i'm gonna look through my list how many movies i teared up or got choked up during like four five five of the ten maybe because the big sick ladybird logan War for Planet of the Apes. Blade Runner I got choked up during. But that's the very clear difference of how we see movies. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing that we're not both literally the exact same, like, 
oh no yeah this is this is why a movie's great this is i had a couple extra ones that i liked there's around valentine's day i think it was the space between us Mm -hmm. and then dunkirk i liked yeah dunkirk i was gonna put on my list but i was like the the movie was beautifully shot and had great scenes and a great story but i don't know it was one of those movies that I think cinematography can be something that it can win an award for, but there's no real story or no. It's they are trying to get off Dunkirk and they get off Dunkirk. Yeah, I mean, it was is a good movie, mm-hmm. but not uh, one of my like most entertaining yeah. movies because I and those aren't it, that's not usually like a movie that I would generally watch either. So it was good, just not the very best. And then I I really did enjoy the space between us. I it might have made my list if I could like remember it better because I watched. I I mean, I watched that around Valentine's Day or on Valentine's Day, one of the two. And I just, I remember it was kind of sad, kind of happy, but it was all really like, it was a great movie. That's the Asa Butterfield Born on Mars. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had Thor and Spider-Man and Dunkirk all in contention. And I was like, these movies, I liked them. They were great, but I saw so many better movies this year than mm-hmm. since 2017 is over. Things coming out in 2018. Obviously, Infinity War. Black Panther. Black Panther. The one movie I'm looking forward to the most is The Isle of Dog, the new Wes Anderson stop motion movie. Annihilation from the director of Ex Machina. That movie looks crazy. Gnome Alone, obviously. Gnomes. Why? Explain to me why the animated gnome market is a thing now. Remember, Sherlock rem- Gnome, Rome- Gnome yeah, and Juliet. Yeah, I was about to say, remember Gnome, gnome Alone? <laughs> Are these all... Who- Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's coming out. Pacific Rim. Thoroughbreds. Looks Ready, really good. Ready Player One. I don't know. I'm not that excited for Ready Player I One. Never, I, know it's a, I know it was a book, mm-hmm. but I never read that book. I know the one thing that a bunch of people that are tweeting out this one paragraph from Ready Player One where the guys are like, and I climbed in my 19-whatever DeLorean from Back to the Future too. And it's like, like just explaining like all this nostalgia stuff to be like oh yeah i remember that kind of thing and i was uh, there's this uh dwayne johnson movie rampage coming out yeah based on the video game rampage oh is that what that's from the like 90s video game where you play as the monsters trying to destroy a city that's it i never played that i never even knew it was a thing yeah deadpool 2 deadpool 2 yep incredibles 2 jurassic world 2 Oh, Sherlock Gnomes is coming out after Gnome Alone, and it's from a completely different production company. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm. Another Purge. Tyler Hotel Perry's Transylvania 3. A new Tyler Perry movie. Lean on Pete. Is it really new, though? Probably not. <laughs> the New Mutants. The I think probably, besides Deadpool, one of the final things Fox will make with X-Men. God Particle, or whatever that's going to be. The next Cloverfield. So there's a lot of good movies coming to 2018. Mm-hmm. There's a there's also some I don't some that I just don't know that are on this list. You see the Slitterman trailer? I that's what I was watching. That does not look good. It no, it looks weird, like too weird. It looks like a student film. Kept coming to that stock footage of like maggots and something getting injected into something. And... Mm-hmm. Solo, a Star Wars story. Venom. <laughs> the, that's the most enthusiastic I'll say that. It's because don't you want explained how a character became how they are? Don't you want that explained for every character? No. Too bad. <laughs> Venom. Hopefully that'll be good. Another Jungle Book? Yeah, it's a different one. Because they announced both of them at the same time. And then the Disney one came out. And then this is one based on just the book. Like Disney did the remake of theirs. X-Men Dark Phoenix? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they're doing a new Grinch, it looks like. It's completely animated with Bendit Cumberbatch Bend- yeah. Lewis. Because after Cat in the Hat, the wife of Dr. Seuss is like, no more live action. The wife of Dr. Seuss? So. Or who, I, th- I think that's who it was. Whoever Cat in the Hat was, it was just so ridiculous. bad. And then there was the Jim Carrey Grinch. The Gr- Jim Carrey Grinch, Grinch was well done. That's why mm-hmm. Cat in the Hat got made. Oh, okay. Uh, there's Fantastic Beasts 2. Who plays the main character? Oh, oh, oh. Because it doesn't look like he... Is he not going to be in this one? No, he is. Eddie Red. Eddie Red. Redman. Redman. Newt. Yeah, Newt's commander. But is he... I don't see his name on He this. is. 
he's just not top billed because there's so many other big names in it. Gotcha. Because Jude Law and Johnny Depp and yeah, he's in there. Yeah, I see it. No. I don't, I don't, I don't like how they're gonna see. This is about this guy. But what if we made a Dumbledore origin story? <laughs> so will it focus on him now, or because will it focus on Grindelwald and Dumbledore? I I don't know. I think it's gonna. F- it's the Grindelwald is in the title. So if they have it so that he meets up with Dumbledore, I'd be fine with that. But if they just make it knowing Dumbledore, kind of like, well, what's the point of the first one besides setting up that literally last scene? The Nun, the new Conjuring cinematic universe movie, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. That's the animated, animated one, one, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a really great animation. Aquaman. Uh, yeah. Bumblebee. Mission Impossible Six. Mary Poppins Returns. Yeah, with Lin-Manuel Miranda. Christopher Robin, which I'm actually looking forward to because it's he's older and he's, it's Hook, but with Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. And what is this? For Mary Poppins, it's the Jane and Michael Banks are grown up. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the, besides remakes, live action remakes of animated movies, it's going to be, but what if everyone grew up? <laughs> because everyone's growing up now. All the people that watch those movies are adults or... Mm-hmm. Young adults, and now they're like, hey, what happened to them? What, what are they up to now? So I'm guessing Jack will probably be Lin-Manuel Miranda. The Crazy Rich Asians. That's apparently a movie coming out this year. Crazy. White Boy Rick. I have gone through IMDb all the way to 2019, and it doesn't say anything else. Johnny English 3. I don't know what that means. Have you not seen the first two Johnny English? I don't think With so. With Ron Atkinson, the guy who played Mr. Bean? No, definitely uh, have not he plays seen a se- He plays a secret agent. Okay, I, yeah. A new Robin Hood movie? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. This looks like 2018 will be a great year for movies. Hopefully, some of these movies that are meant to be, like, high points will work. Hopefully, the Han Solo movie doesn't suck. Hopefully, Aquaman doesn't suck. Let's talk about that giant space horse in the room and how this movie literally doesn't matter at all obviously we're going to get into spoiler territory so if you haven't seen star wars the last jedi you can just stop listening here okay so first off the finn and rose story let's talk about that <laughs> that was ridiculous literally I, okay. literally didn't matter i wouldn't i wouldn't say that this this does not matter that this story doesn't matter there's, like okay that didn't matter because are, it didn't work there's in the end one thi- two things that matter that happened in this movie yeah but i mean so you can't say the movie can be completely wiped out because oh, i'm not saying that it can either i'm yeah. not saying it should i'm just saying that this feels like half the movie not even half 75 percent of this movie was filler the rose finn story was filler and the poe story was filler yeah the only thing that mattered was luke ray and kylo ren pretty much because everything that poe did didn't matter literally didn't matter yeah because it it, none of it worked same with rose none of it worked no none of it mattered they introduced benicio del toro who just was there to double cross him in the end yeah he seemed like he was a good guy because he gave her the thing back because all he needed was that conductor thing that was shaped exactly how it needed to be shaped to fit those two prongs Mm -hmm. no it's just the one prong it was just the one thing well it was like a double thing like that and the thing was curved so it would like that oh so it touched both it touched both things because it was like a half a like a half moon shape thing actually there are three things that matter in this the director of this is the one who's directing the next trilogy so he had to set up the next trilogy at the end that scene when the stable boy grabs the yeah i was like okay i hate you (laughs) i was like okay i see why people hated this movie yeah i noticed i noticed that too Uh, he just he force pulled the broom to him it's like oh yeah we get it you're the director of the next trilogy Cool, good for you. Yeah. Have fun with that. So they kind of phoned it in. The casino scene, that whole planet, that felt like the prequels to me. That felt like we're going to see a 60s diner in space with Jar Jar <laughs> fart jokes kind of a thing. Yeah. I get, and I kind of get why they put the casino scene they in wanted there, another, though. They wanted another cantina scene. That's that that and what it was. It also kind of just helps, again, like you said, for the next trilogy. And they're like a resistance, the rebels, and the people who were there were making money on weapons and stuff. And I like they, I like how they're like, let's get a little political with this. Yeah. They're selling weapons to both sides. Yeah. Ooh. I don't like I don't like that they made BB-8. He had a kill count. BB-8 killed guys in this. <laughs> the scene when he was shooting coins out was the dumbest scene in the movie. Yeah. Did he kill people? He had that. Oh, like, he, eight, he had yeah, the, he had the giant. Walker. Yeah, yeah the, that's true shooting phasma doesn't matter apparently 
at all. Yeah, that she's was, in it for one scene and I immediately know, gets that killed, happened maybe? so fast. They they marketed her as like, oh, we got Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones. She's in armor this whole time. You see her eye, and then she falls in a hole. Also, she's the only one that deflects lasers. Why don't they all have that armor? So the post storyline, we're gonna we're, we'll save Ray and. The main, the actual one that matters for last, but first thing with the post storyline, Carrie Fisher, God rest her soul, but they had a chance there. I get why I, they. Could. I I kept watching. I kept like the whole time because I didn't know that they weren't like officially killing her off here. Mm, I didn't know either. And so like the whole time, like oh, this must be where it's her end. Like then this she, must be then she, yeah. Force pulled herself. Flies back. That yeah. was. That was like. I kind of yeah. liked that though. I actually enjoyed that. I mean, it showed, she was already force sensitive. You already knew that, but they could have just had that bent. How she just was gone. Yeah, no, I get they could have done that, but I just I liked how they did that because it helps shows that she does actually have the force in her. Like, I mean, they already like, showed. Uh, it. They've pretty much showed it already. And yeah. With Han dying, how she reacts to that, she knows, even yeah. though she doesn't see it or hear it about it she just feels it yeah which i don't want to know how they're gonna do her in the next one it'll probably be pretty quick they'll just be like oh she passed away during the flight to wherever we're going now something the end okay so poe they're trying to get away from that ship that ship could go faster that ship could have caught them why didn't they just catch them but the whole having laura dern's character not explain what she was doing why I don't know. They're like, oh, but see, now you have to, uh, if you obey orders, she was being a hero. She was trying to get us here. Why didn't you tell us that you were trying to get us here? We didn't have a spy telling them where we were going. They, we, we didn't have any of this stuff. You could have told us and we would have been like, okay, we'll get there. But no, mutiny, all that fun stuff. And that had no payoff either. They had Laura Dern, new character they introduced, light speed kills. <laughs> but, I mean, which was good for them in the end, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it helped them, but why? Like, that just, it was one of those things where it's just, she explained it, that story wouldn't have happened. Yeah. That's why she didn't explain it in the storytelling. That's why she's just like, oh, you don't matter. I'm, I'm just doing this. They made it seem like she was just being this terrible leader, which she kind of was, actually. Yeah. She was being a good leader. No, she wasn't. She got people killed. No, yeah. She's the reason that all this is happening. True. At that part. So, even if they thought about that even sooner, they mm-hmm. could have, like, made it so much better. Yeah, they if she, literally she would just been like, okay, I'm getting us to this planet. Not, we don't, we're not going to try to stop you. Hey, by the way, Finn and Rose are trying to get this guy to ha- help us hack the shield. Oh, that doesn't matter either. That's why she didn't explain anything. Because yeah. neither of those stories would have happened. And it would have just been, they could have come up with a new It was just useless. All right, so the only story that really actually does matter is Ray, Luke, and Kylo Ren. Yep. They, you know, so man, what that, do you what do you think about the connection between Kylo Ren and Ray? It made sense when how they were doing it because Snoke is like I was doing it, but okay, now it was still happening after they killed Snoke at the end. Maybe one of them did it though, because Snoke said he did it. What if they like? I mean, so I guess like because Kylo Ren could probably do it. He'd be like, okay, maybe. If but Snoke also the it. Force connects everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they say. And so, like, what if it's just because it's so strong in the two of them, like, it's connecting them more? Or my other theory is that they are somehow related. Even though her parents are drunks. Yeah. That that, are, they're nobodies. Yeah. Which, that could have just been, it's either that is actually what it is, and the guy, Ryan Johnson, is like, yeah, but what if we fuck with everybody right now? And mm-hmm. just make it so, like, none of their fan theories matter? We kill Snoke, and we I, make I, it so that uh, she's nobody. That pissed me off, too. That just happened way too easily. It, it was so obvious, too. Like, mm-hmm. he's like, go, strike down your enemy. It's like, okay, we get it. You're going to get killed. We get it. You're dying. Yeah. It just seemed like Snoke was just so underused. I think it's a good thing, but it's stupid how they did it. Yeah. Because I didn't want another Emperor. No. Which it kind of was just that. It was. Because he kills the Emperor. Yeah. Vader kills the Emperor. Now Kylo Ren kills. Kylo Ren kills him, and he is Except attacking... Except, the only difference is that... No inst- Force Lightning. Yeah, no, it's terrible. <laughs> no, 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 Kylo Ren's, like, taking his place in this. Which I think is good, having it so that the villain is just evil now. He's not like, oh, I'm contemplating. I liked how they explained it, like, oh, she saw the good in him, and Kylo saw the evil, and they were both trying to make each other change, and... That's why Snoke was, like, putting them together like that to make them both. I feel like they figured out what General Hux was in this one. Because General Hux actually, like, doing things that matter. Especially at the end where he's like, mm-hmm. stop. What are you doing? And here, he's gonna he's gonna kill Kylo Ren. 
Mm-hmm. He's going to shoot him. Hopefully, in the next one, maybe they'll have it so that maybe Hux will get killed. Maybe Kylo Ren will get killed. And they put too many jokes into this one. Yeah. Not not that too many jokes is a bad thing, but they did it in serious scenes. How they're like, here's the lightsaber. Him tossing it away would have been fine, but how he did it in like a, like behind the back kind of. Mm-hmm. Or the drinking the blue milk scene. Yeah. When he's like, ah. That gr- the green it was like green. Yeah. It was nasty. They kind of made Luke look real bad in this. He was good. He was cool. He was still the exact same character, but they made him too jokey. They made him kind of how Yoda was when Luke first went to him, how he was like this crazy guy, except mm-hmm. for he didn't become the serious trainer like mm-hmm. like Yoda did. Which, by the way, puppet Yoda, voiced by Frank Oz. Best thing about the movie. How oh, it wasn't good. the crappy CG. It was an actual puppet. I feel like they had to do that, though, because of mm-hmm. how it was old Yoda who died, not, like, using some CG. Well, they could have. Um, they still could have used CG, they but... They could have, but it wouldn't have been as accurate, I don't think. When uh, Bringing that one back is... During that scene, by the way, I was so hoping... Because they cut to the tree, like, where the book the books were yeah, for <laughs> for, like, a cutaway shot before it got struck by lightning... After they showed Yoda, I was like, "Have Obi Wan come out?" <laughs> I was yeah, I was wondering too. Have him walk out. Have have young Obi Wan obviously because Sir Alan Guinness is dead. Has been. That would have been. I like how they're just like, "Oh, have Yoda strike the tree," and the books are gone. Oh no, the sacred text. Even though they're not, spoilers. But yeah, that I don't know. Let's talk about Porgs though. Can we talk about Porgs? No. We can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> if they genetically make Porgs. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but... Penguins and hamsters. There you go. It wasn't as bad as people say it was, but man, was it bad. Yeah, it was definitely not good. It felt so rushed like mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing. But we're getting JJ. JJ's coming back for the last one. Okay, that's so, good. Hopefully. Yeah. No, he said he is. Okay. Like They did the whole video thing like, this is the director for episode nine. Hi, I'm JJ Abrams. And I was like, ooh, Ryan Johnson. They should have had Ghost Anakin show up. <laughs> Just, I think, uh, like, like in the version of the originals that you can get now, where instead of having it be the random guy that was Darth Vader, they have it be Hayden Christensen in there, which is like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> why wouldn't they? Because they changed the original. Is why I'm saying don't do that. Mm. Just leave it how it is. Don't remaster your... Like, remastering your film to make it look better, sure, but to change things is... No, no. But I'm just excited for more prequels. <laughs> yeah, right. Rogue One, Solo, those are both prequels. They take place before the original. Mm-hmm. I want to know how these ghost things, like, how these ghosts work in this. Well, only Force-sensitive people, only the strong Force people can use them and apparently see them. Because so they, during the Ewok party... Why can't they just get put... Hayden Christensen in this movie, go snap some sense into his grandson, Kylo Ren, and be like, hey, Because Kylo Ren's just evil. Vader turned good at the end. That's how they did that story. I bet you they're going to do the same thing to Kylo Ren. I'm just hoping they don't do, because it's very clear that they do that Finn Rose bullshit where they're going to be a thing, which why? They just introduced her to do that. Honestly, and I hate that this is a thing that everyone's like, oh, do this, do this. But Poe and Finn had more of a connection than Rose and Finn. That would have been, I would have loved, I actually loved that. If they were just like, yeah, Finn and Poe are a thing. They're like, that's fucking hilarious and <laughs> awesome and good for you. <laughs> Go for it. But th- they did the whole Poe and Ray thing at the end where he's like, oh, I'm Poe. And she's like, I'm Ray. He's like, I know. Mm-hmm. Which, that's what Han said to Leia. Kylo Ren could, I guess he would be though pure evil like you say because Luke even said it. Like mm-hmm. he's gone. And he, Leia said it too. He was like, "That's not my son anymore." The the scene where he's projecting himself, where he's his hair's darker. Yeah, he I, looks, I, he I looks noticed younger. I noticed that as soon as I saw haircut. it. He's walking on that salt, and there's no footprints in the salt. I missed the footprints thing, but after I heard about it, I was like, "Okay." And, and then I like watched it. I saw it again, and I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah." Yeah, I didn't. There's so many things I missed. I didn't notice the footprints thing, but I I noticed he looked younger. Like he looked like the younger version that was in the. Mm. flashback scenes but that was that was good that, i like i like that that's how they did it people were like why why they ki- they didn't kill him off why did he just disappear because the force that's what happened to yoda that's literally beat for beat how yoda worked except for yoda turned into a useful character he was actually training him yeah hey look it's porg 
Ray, Luke, Kylo Ren, and Snoke story was literally just the Yoda, Luke, Vader, Emperor story again. Except for without the Force lightning. So, will Luke not be in this next one then? I mean, he could be a ghost. He could ghost appear. Anyways, thank you for listening to the Best Boys Podcast. If you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash bestboys. Or you can just leave us a review on iTunes. Write something about us. It can be bad, it can be good. I don't care. It's something. Follow the Twitter at Best Boys Podcast. Email us, bestboyspodcast at gmail.com. And yeah, happy 2018.